So we've got a couple more minutes, but um, Patrick just had the, the brilliant idea to ease my nerves, and that is to tell jokes. So uh, for the next two minutes, I'm going to tell a couple jokes. Uh, raise your hand if you've heard this. Uh, what do you call a cow with two legs? Or you can just call it out if you know the answer. Bad cow. <laughs> That's funny. No. Lean meat. <laughs> okay. Okay, these are all my cow jokes, so forgive me. But what do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. There you go. What do you call a cow just after she's given birth? Decaffeinated. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, well, we still have a couple minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. The doors are closed. My name is Brian Lewis. I'm from uh, Wichita, Kansas, hence the cow jokes. That's what I'm famous for. Um, I am a front-end developer, front-end engineer is the official title, at Four Kitchens. Been there for about a month and a half. Before that, I was doing Modules Unraveled, so if you've listened to the Modules Unraveled podcast, you might recognize my voice. If not, no worries. Um, this session originally, the first time I gave this, took about three hours. Uh, because somebody kept asking questions, and that's totally cool, but you know, three hours doesn't fit in a session here. The second time I gave it ended up being two hours, so I was getting a little closer. And uh, so for this, I've cut out like all of the general site building stuff, because I talked about a lot of advanced site building things. Um, and today, it's, it's pretty much solely going to focus on com configuration management and composer. Uh, composer is actually going to go first. But uh, everything is pre recorded, because using composer on any, even the best Wi-Fi is slow, and on conference Wi-Fi doesn't exist. So uh, if you want to follow along, well, you're not going to be able to because everything's video and edited, and you're just not going to. But uh, later, if you want to do this, you're going to need Composer, Git, Drush, and uh, I use Drupal Console for some things as well. The two big ones are Composer and Git. Those are actually required to do anything. Uh, Drush and Console are installed as a part of this process, but it's a good idea to have them both installed globally on your system so that you can use them without having to like uh, use like vendor slash bin slash Drush or whatever. You just type Drush. Um, cool. So let, let's just get started. It is officially 2.15. Installing Drupal with Composer. There is a com there's a Composer template on uh, GitHub. It's at github.com slash drupal dash composer slash drupal dash project. That's what I'm basing this entire uh, series on. And so uh, on that site, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a usage section where it says composer create project. That's what I'm going to use uh, just to start this whole thing off. Also, this session is not going to teach you the ins and outs of composer or configuration management. It's basically a giant demo. Here's how I've built a site from scratch, beginning to end, with Composer and configuration management, pushing things from local to live. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to learn the ins and outs, you're going to have to do that later. This is going to show you the awesome power of both of them, and then you can uh, explore later. So here's, uh, I've got a terminal open. I'm just going to hit play. It's using that Composer create project command uh, that you saw a second ago. And I'm pretty sure I hit play. Let's try again. That didn't do anything. Was it playing over there? Oh, sorry. It doesn't play on my computer. So this is really inconvenient because I can't see what it's doing. But uh, it's, it's running everything. And Composer will never, ever run this fast on your machine, ever, ever. Um, I'm pretty sure that was like, is it what? Uh, no. Unfortunately, I can't. Uh, I wish I could. Yeah, so after you run that command, you basically have a composer, or you have a Drupal 8 site installed, and here's the directory structure. So we've got, I told it to install into a dcna.com directory, and if you look in there, there's actually a web directory underneath that. That's where Drupal itself is installed. So that's where your, the core is, your modules, your themes, the sites directory, all that's in there, one level below the actual project root. Uh, and we'll talk more about why that is in a minute. I'm going to blow through some of this because this is going to take too long, but I've added the site to the host file, created the virtual host directory, created the database, um, and now I'm going to use Drupal console to actually install the site. I'm, I'm being pretty verbose with my install script, um, and you can, this will all be recorded so you can see this later. I'm going to try and blow through it though because I've got a lot to, to show you. So with that, whoa, got really loud. With that running, uh, you can see I had to fill out a couple more questions, but then after mere seconds in video edited time, uh, we have Drupal installed, and we can actually log into it using Drush ULI uh, with the 
uh, URI in there. And when you do that, it takes you straight to the site where you can log in and change your password or you know, whatever you want to do. So like literally those two commands, install Drupal, or install the project and then install Drupal and log me in. So that's pretty awesome, right, Composer? Sweet. Um, so at this point, if you're going to follow along, you definitely want to export your database now for configuration management purposes. Later, uh, I'm going to show you what happens if you don't import a database. But if you do, then you can just start exporting and importing config between uh, sites right away. So it's always a good idea to go ahead and export that database now. Um, I should have hit play a minute ago, but it's just doing it. Pretty easy peasy stuff. Uh, and now we're going to prepare the settings.php and settings.local.php files. I'm going to skip over probably a lot of this, but um, if you don't already clean up your settings.php file, I highly recommend it because this, I think, it was originally like 730 lines. When I'm done deleting all the comments and unused stuff, it comes out to 40 lines that's actually being used. So that makes it way easier to read. And actually, 10 of those lines are going to go to a, another file in a minute anyway. Um, definitely helpful, something I always do. And to uh, raise your hand if you've used a settings.local.php file, like with Drupal 7. Awesome. I'm going to skip a lot of this then. <laughs> I, won't, I don't want to waste any time. Um, in the settings.php file, if you haven't used it before, there's a little snippet there that says, uh, if a settings.local.php file exists, use it. And the only thing you really need to know is make sure that is the very last thing in the file. Because if you have database credentials, for example, in that settings.local.php file, and then other ones further down in this file, they'll be overwritten, but this one in your local settings won't do anything. So make sure it's the last thing. You know, whatever you type on there, we can't see anyway. Yeah. That's Let's try it. Is that any better? It shouldn't be playing yet. Is it better though? OK, cool. Hopefully that'll work. Um, it will all be recorded, and I'll be releasing all this stuff later too, so you can watch it. Uh, let's see. So this is uncommenting the if settings.local.php file exists. OK, we did that. And if you have any other questions throughout this session, feel free to raise your hand. I'll answer them. Um, but I'll also try and give you some time at the end to do the same thing. I wish I could see the screen. All right, OK. So I had to uh, change the permissions on the default directory so that I could actually create the settings.local.php file because they were set to 555. Change it back to 7, or change it to 777. Create the settings.php file, and then change the default directory back to 555, and, and then you're good. Cool. So let's go ahead and move on. Uh, next, we're going to initialize a Git repo, add the settings.local.php to a Git ignore file. If you don't use a global Git ignore file, you should look into that. But uh, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to add it to the projects.gitignore file. And it's just going to make sure that the settings.local.php file is never committed in this project. <coughs> Raise your hand if you use uh, global Git ignore files. Cool, you guys are awesome. You're doing this right. I really wish I could see the screen. Because I don't know when it's done. All right, so we've added all those files and we're committing them. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and push it up to a remote repo. so that we can pull it to our live one. Have you guys, ha, raise your hand if you've used configuration management so far in Drupal 8. A handful? Cool. 
And raise your hand if you've used Composer. Why are you guys here? I mean, you already know everything. <laughs> are you just here to, to see me mess up on stage? I understand. Um, all right. So let's, let's go on to using com, uh, Composer to manage dependencies. Um, we are going to use it to uh, install packages from packagist.drupal-composer.org. You probably can't read that either. I can't see to even know if you can. Um, this is where you want to go to, to look for packages. Basically, this is a, uh, a clone of Packagist that mirrors Drupal.org. So anything that's on Drupal.org, any modules, themes, anything like that, you can install using Composer by, uh, thanks to this Packagist site. So all you do is search for what you want. In this case, I'm going to search for Path Auto. God, I really wish I could see that. And then you'll select it, and right there you'll see the Composer require command that you need to install it. You'll also need to do uh, specify a version, because down the right hand corner you can see like there's Drupal 7 versions, Drupal 8 versions, dev versions, all kinds of stuff. Um, but we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, I'm going to skip these manual installation ones. You can add these uh, things straight to the composer.json file, but since you guys are already using Composer and config configuration management, I'm going to assume that you know how to use the command line. Um, so let's, well, there is, you should know that you shouldn't do this, basically. Uh, when you add it directly to the composer.json file, if you run like composer update to install it, it's also going to update all of the other packages in that list. So you might be trying to just install Path Auto, but you might inadvertently update five other modules that you didn't mean to, and so that's not a great idea. So I'm going to skip a couple of these so we can get ahead to the command line stuff, which is the right way to do it. All right, via the command line. And it's even, it's easier too. You just write uh, composer require, quote, vendor slash package colon version, end quote, enter, and you've got it. And it takes care of adding it to the composer.json file and everything for you. So yeah, I mean, that's how you install a module. Um, pretty awesome. And you might also notice that I, I used uh, the dev version when I in the command, but it installed version uh, alpha 3. That might confuse some people at first, and that ha all has to do with the prefer stable option, which I'll uh, explain in just a minute. Now, uninstalling via the command line is just as simple. You just do composer remove vendor slash package. No quotes, no version number, no nothing. You just type it in. It'll remove it. It'll take it out of the composer.json file. You're all set. Super simple. And you, you'll also notice that uh, every time I do this, it's installing dependencies. So like I installed Path Auto. It also installed Ctools and Token. And then when I removed it, also removed those two because they weren't being used by anything else in that, in that package file. Composer is awesome. So uh, if you want to upgrade and downgrade projects, uh, it's pretty easy. OK, so here's, here's when I mentioned that I specified the at dev version, but it installed alpha 3 instead. If you really, really want the dev version, you just install it like, uh, as if it were a, um, like a Git project. Question. Yes? That is a great question. Um, it didn't used to, but I believe it does now. Greg, do you know the answer to that? If you, when you compose or install a module, does it run like the install hooks and everything? Okay, it only pulls down the code files, so you'll need to install it yourself as well. Is that the same thing for removing? If you remove it, Perfect. Thank you for the clarification. So when you remove one, make sure you disable it or uninstall it in this case before you compose or remove. Otherwise, you're going to be leaving stuff in the database, and that's not good. Great question. Thank you. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. This is awful. I can't see the screen. Okay, so we're still enforcing the div version. So I mentioned that you would uh, 
install it as if it were a Git branch. So you can use like dev-8.x-1.x and that'll give you the actual dev version uh, regardless of whether you have uh, required, what was it? Uh, now I'm losing the, prefer stable, thank you. Prefer stable set to true. So that'll actually get it for you. Cool. Uh, so now you can see that we have version 8.x-1.x C4952E1 installed. So it's an actual like hash commit of that module. Uh, and now when we run Composer update in the future, it'll always be the dev version and not a, a stable release. So if you want to downgrade a module, this is kind of the only reason I ever specify a specific version. Um, and that's like if there was a breaking change then I'll want to revert back. Otherwise, I use the like the star at dev because it'll always do the latest release. But if it's a breaking change, all you do is add um, the or specify the version. You can do it through the composer.json file like this is doing, or you can do it through the command line by just saying composer require and specify a version. So now you can see that it, it installed. Uh, version one or eight one thirteen, and updating is the same same thing. If you have a specific version installed, you can use uh, the command line or the composer.json file and just specify the version you want. Any questions so far about Composer, or anything that I've done really wrong that you guys who really know Composer know? Okay, I guess I'm I'm doing well so far. Cool. So uh, I mentioned that I only specify versions when I am, uh, need to downgrade. Usually I follow this technique of automatically keeping everything uh, up to date with the latest stable. I set my preferred stable to true, and in that instance, star at dev for the version will install the dev version until there's an official release, and then stick to official releases from that point forward. If you set preferred stable to false, then it's just gonna use the dev version no matter what, for better or worse. It'll also affect all of your packages and projects. Cool. So uh, for that, I would, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install the admin toolbar module here using uh, the star at dev. You can see that happen. And you'll actually notice when I do that, it says there's nothing to install. And that's because we'd already installed 14, which is the latest release. But it did update the composer.json file there with the new version pattern so that in the future, it will update and it won't be stuck to that version. And if you want to only install stable releases, ignoring that initial dev, you can just do like 8.1.star. Um, but it, it does the same thing if there's a stable release. Using the at dev will let you have that initial dev release as well. So if you already know there's at least one stable release, either way it doesn't matter. You can use at dev or not. It, it really won't, won't make a difference. As long as you have prefer, prefer stable set to true. Clarify that. Um, so this is, uh, I can't tell what it's doing. This is really unfortunate. I think this is just showing what I what I just explained using the the star without the dev. Yeah, cool. So the really fun stuff is that you can install packages from a Git repository. This you may or may not have done before. Raise your hand if you've ever used a Composer to install a Git package. Far fewer. Awesome. Now I feel like I can, I can show you guys something. Um, I'm going to take a look at the redirect module. This is at github.com slash md dash system slash redirect. When I wrote this uh, session, there was no redirect for 8 on Drupal.org, so you had to get it from Git. Now there is one, and so you don't have to do this. But uh, if you want to, for example, uh, if you have a set of modules or a theme that you use within your company on multiple sites, but you, know, you don't necessarily want to release them to Drupal.org, this is a good way that you can use Composer to require that module or theme in a bunch of sites, uh, but you know, just use it internally. So uh, in the composer.json file here, I'll open that up real quick. 
and you can see that there's some metadata telling you about like the title and the description, um, but there's also uh, the type value, and the type is set to Drupal dash module. In the composer um, project that we used in the very first step to install Drupal, if you look in there, there's a setting at the bottom that says uh, anything that is of type Drupal dash module, put in the module slash contrib directory. Anything that's of type uh, Drupal dash theme, put it in the theme slash contrib directory. So you can actually create your own types and install them into specific places into your folder structure, uh, however you want. This one is using Drupal, uh, Drupal dash module, so it's gonna go in with the other contrib modules, even though it's coming from, uh, from GitHub instead of from Drupal.org. So you can use that. Uh, and there's also that require section down at the bottom. That's super handy in case your module needs uh, like a library. Like the full calendar module needs a full calendar library. It could require that library here so that when you require the module in your project, it will also get the library and put it where you've told it to automatically without having to download each uh, separately. So let's go ahead and install it. First thing you have to do is add the git repository to your repositories section in your composer.json file. And the repository is gonna be the GitHub URL, basically. So you can see after the packagist entry, add a comma and add a new one. There we go. Um, again, I wish I could see it, but the type is git, and then the URL is their GitHub URL. And this just tells Composer, look in a git repository, and here's the URL of that repository that you should look in for these packages. So now we can just require the module using the git branch as the version. So in the command line, it'd be like composer require Drupal dash redirect colon dev dash a dot x dash one dot x. And when it's done, you'll see the hash of the specific version of it was, uh, that was installed. And all of these are also being written to your lock file, composer.lock file. Raise your hand if you don't know what a composer.lock file is. Okay, just a few. Uh, I'll go ahead and explain it. The composer.lock file is created every time you run like composer update or uh, install things like this. And that lock file me contains the specific versions of the modules that you're installing. That means that when you uh, push this to another instance of your site and run composer install, it'll read it from the lock file and get that version, not an update, a potentially updated version of, the, of that module. Hope that's clear. So if you're wondering how to decide which version pattern you should use when you're requiring packages, I created this little table. Uh, those first two are the ones that I use most often, either um, the dev until stable or always dev. Every once in a while, I'll use the exact version if I need to downgrade, but those are some of the, it's just a little table I put together. See somebody taking a picture of it, cool. Uh, again, these will all be in the slides. Um, okay, so actually I'm gonna skip the overriding settings and code with settings.php because we're not gonna have time for it. So uh, we'll go on to installing the site on a production server with Composer. So you're gonna clone the repo, run the install with no dev, uh, and then copy the database credentials and install the site. So I'll just hit play. Um, I've done this on like a one-click install type site, so I'll have to, to do a couple things, but basically I'm gonna SSH into it, go into the public HTML directory and move the existing site uh, to a backup directory so I can get to the database credentials uh, later. And uh, this particular host expects the Drupal root to be in the public HTML slash DCNA PR. Uh-oh, what's going on? Oh, I'm already cloning it. Oh well. So uh, I'll clone it here. And then, uh, because it's because I don't have full control over this server, I'm just going to create a symbolic link, basically, from source web to the directory it thinks it's going to be in, and that'll let me work from uh, this packages file. All right, so then we just run composer install no dev. Raise your hand if you don't know what no dev does. Okay, no dev is going to ignore everything in the require-dev section of your composer.json file. So you can put things like um, devel in there so that that's never installed on your production server. You can put um, 
uh, what's the stage file proxy or reroute email, all, the, all of those things that you don't want on your production server in like BHAT or PHP unit, things that you use locally but don't need to be on the server, put those in the, the require-dev section and then when you, re when you run composer install dash dash no dash dev, that'll ignore that and just include the stuff from the require section. So that's installed. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Got it. I'll go ahead and copy the database credentials from my original site to the one we just created. I'm hoping some of this is useful to everybody. <laughs> I'd, I'd really love your feedback on this after the, the sessions that I know if something needs to change drastically. So I'm just creating the settings.local file with the database credentials. Here we go. Cool. So then, uh, let's see, I'm gonna skip this part. I basically just drop the database and create a new one. And oh, I just have to watch it because I also install the site. And this is again is all because I used the one-click install. So once it's all set up, you can go to your site and uh, it's running on the production server now. I'm gonna install Drupal. Raise your hand if you've ever installed Drupal this fast. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think uh, I fast forwarded that a thousand times, literally. Um, cool, so we've got a, a site installed on production using the one that we pushed from local. Any claps? No? Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> however, if you are familiar with configuration management, you probably are thinking to yourself, he just messed up because he installed it and didn't import the database. That's true, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that if you ever make that mistake as well. Um, Okay, let's go talk about configuration management. Gosh, I'm running out of time. So, uh, whoops, I just skipped something. Let's go back. Okay, so Drupal stores configuration files in the directory that you specify in your settings.php. Um, by default, Drupal will create a site's default files config underscore some random hash slash sync directory. And uh, I'm gonna move that up one directory so that it's outside of my web root, so that's into the, the, just the project root. That way it's still within version control but not web accessible, plus for security. Um, and with the composer project that we use to create this site, that's super easy. So I'll just change that real quick from whatever that random one was to dot dot slash config slash sync and now we're ready to, to move ahead. You definitely want to delete the old config directory that was installed um, with, by Drupal because you can have some issues if you've got two different config directories that it thinks it should be looking in. Uh, so that's that. And at this point we have a fresh installation on production and a partially built site locally. You can do configuration either through the UI or the uh, Terminal, raise your hand if you want to see it through the UI. Awesome, I like you guys. Oh, some people said, well, I'm sorry. If you want to see it through the UI, you'll have to come later because it's, there were only like two or three of you. Uh, I'm gonna skip through these slides. We're running out of time. It's interesting stuff, but uh, it's way better through, through the command line. So the entire, uh, whoa, did I just skip something? Yeah, okay, so here's with Drush. So, super, super fast. You basically just type Drush config dash export and it's done. And uh, I'm pulling up the site. You can see the config directory was created. All the configuration files are in there. And there's even a .ht access file automatically created that tightens up security a little, little better. Cool. So now we need to go ahead and uh, push that with git. So we're going to commit that. I think I uh, first commit the settings.php file because that was never done. And then I'm adding the config directory. I really wish I could see that screen. 
Can somebody tell me what it's doing? No? <laughs> oh, right, I'm removing the, the, the site on the, is this the live site now? Is this the development? Yeah, the old config files, remove those. Okay, so now we should be left with just the, uh, just the config. So we're gonna add that and commit it locally and push it up and then we'll be ready to pull it into production. Woohoo. Okay, um, I'm gonna skip the UI because we're not gonna show that right now. This, thing, oh, this is still UI. So I did run into an issue uh, because I tried to pull the config and I didn't notice that it hadn't unlinked the settings.php file when I tried to pull the new one in. If you come across that, just change the default folders permissions to something like 777, pull it in and then change them back to 555. Uh, I've only had that issue with the settings.php file, not the like config uh, directories or anything. So okay. This is on the live site. If I do a uh, get status, you'll see that it did pull the config directory, uh, except if I try and do get pull, it'll say is a, uh, oh, here we go. This is, this is changing the permissions, right? Yes, good. Like I said, you won't need to do this for the, to sync config. It's just uh, in the default directory. So it should be done. And now that we have pulled in changes, I like to run composer install no dev just because it's a good practice to have the latest modules at all times, but I don't think it actually does anything here. And then I change into the directory and try to import, but it says your UUID is different and we expected that because I didn't import the database. So if you come across this, then you'll need to um, set the variable. Drush7 had uh, v, vget and vset. Drupal 8 has, or Drush8 has cget and cset for setting configuration because we're not using variables. So if we switch to the web directory, we can run drush cget, is it going, there we go. Drush cget system.site uuid, and it'll print it out there for you. And then you can just basically copy that and go over to the other side or the production site, it doesn't matter which one you use, and run drush c set system site UUID quote paste it in end quote, and then you're ready to start syncing configuration. So if it, if you get that error that says uh, the UUIDs are different, just grab it from one and paste it in the other. And the last note, uh, I don't know if, any, if anybody knows why this happens, please come up and tell me, but uh, I've had an issue when I try to import, it says that the, um, the, the shortcuts have an issue. And so I basically just have to come in here and delete the default shortcuts and then it works. Has anybody had that issue? Yes? Like I did a Google search for it and there were like two mentions of it, but it's happened to me every time since, so I don't know what the deal is. But if you delete them, then you're good. So, okay, back in the terminal, we're just gonna run drush config import y, and boom, import successfully. So now we can go to the home page on production, and you'll see that the site name has changed from my awesome site to DrupalCon New Orleans site building. And that's, that's it. Do, does anybody have any questions? I, I was gonna run through a whole like, two minute, like change things here and then push them up. But if you've got questions, I'd love to answer those first. I didn't understand the part about um, deleting the config file and adding the config sync. Deleting the config file and then adding config sync. And Oh, is it moving out of the site's default files directory? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so when it's in the files directory, it's 
technically web accessible, although they've got that random hash in there, so it's very difficult. Um, and I just like to put them up into the project route outside of my web route, just for a little more security and easier for me to get to if I need to, to check something. Does that make sense? Cool. Any other questions about either one, composer or config management? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that whole section that I skipped in the middle about having a, a local settings file. You can set uh, module settings basically in that file that will never be uh, pushed or affect other instances of the site. And we can talk more. Yep, yep, I put them in there and they're never saved to configuration or anything. Yep. There was another question I thought. No? Oh, yeah. I don't. Possibly. <laughs> I possibly should. Uh, the question was, do I have any issues of uh, security since I'm installing things from Packagist instead of straight from Drupal.org? Um, I, I don't actually know if there should be cause for alarm, but I think it's, it's pretty well uh, used and maintained, and I haven't heard anybody talk about it. So, yeah. Yes? Okay, so the question. What's your thoughts about that with regard to composer packages, et cetera, not just in terms of security, but in terms of somebody pushes up a break and change or somebody pulls that repo? You're deploying using composer install all the time, and suddenly your sites are down because that library is gone. I think that is a great philosophical question that I have no answer to. <laughs> uh, the question, in case anybody's curious and wants to talk about it, was um, what are my thoughts on. Uh, relying on a third party like Composer to install things where uh, if somebody changes the package on Packagist or whatever and all of a sudden it doesn't work, uh, if I'm relying on them to get that, then I can't get it because it doesn't work. <laughs> There, there's actually a, a buff that's going to be happening after this, all about Composer. I would say go to that uh, buff and ask there, because they'll probably be able to answer better than I can. Okay. Oh, turn that on. Yeah, I keep talking. Manage, there you go. Manage that process. Um, so you essentially have two different repos. One is like the rendered site or the, um, or the built site. The other one is the one that you're working off of. And we built a tool called Aquifer that, that helps um, uh, with that workflow. And uh, yeah. And which one gets the the art? Yeah. So um, so there's like a build process, and then that build gets pushed to like something like Pantheon. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Cool. So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. Uh, you can depends on what you mean by testing. Well, what do you do? QA against the artifact? The uh, the artifact. If you're doing like formal QA or things like that, but you're developing off of uh, your uh, your local um, or in sort of mission which is actually cool. All right, go to the Four Kitchens booth and check out Aquifer. He can tell you all about it. All right, so uh, we're about out of time, but I'm gonna run through like a, just a typical workflow. We've spent all this time getting things set up. Now let's change some things locally, commit it uh, using configuration management to Git, push it up, and import it, and have uh, an exact copy. 
this is all the stuff we're going to do. Um, you can read that if you'd like, but basically we're going to install modules, install themes, uh, set a default theme, enable modules, change a temp path, uh, create a view, move some blocks around, uh, save a Google Analytics configuration, but then override it with uh, a local file, um, and then we're going to do the actual exporting and pushing everything up. So here we go. Install the module. We're going to uh, first change into the project root, and then do a composer install of path auto. And then we're going to install the Zimphonies theme for Drupal 8, which is the only Drupal 8 theme that I found that looked halfway decent on Drupal.org right now. And then we're going to go back to the web directory and enable the, uh, all the modules. So admin toolbar, admin toolbar, extra tools, path auto, and redirect. And that's done. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, in the user interface set the Zimphonies theme as the default theme. and change the temp path from the funky MAMP one to just slash TMP. And I did create a couple of articles before I did this, so when we create a view, it's actually gonna show something. Uh, so we'll go to structure views. And just add a simple view that lists articles. This is the good stuff, guys. Real simple, just save that. And then we're going to go to the Google Analytics uh, settings. Oh, no, I'm going to add these blocks first. Add that articles block that I just created to the left sidebar. And then, just for fun, add the who's new block, because who doesn't like to know who's new on a site? And then we're going to go save a conf uh, Google Analytics account in the configuration so that it is actually saved to configuration and, and will be pushed to live when we do it. Here you can see some things are already taking place. I hope that's not your Google Analytics account. 999999999-99. Cool, and then this is the settings.local file that I skipped because we didn't have time, but basically I'm just setting that to an empty string so that locally nothing ever uh, reports. And then we're exporting the local configuration. Super easy. And then we're gonna commit it to Git and push it up to the repo. And I'm just showing that the composer.json and lock files are updated because we've installed the additional modules. Cool, it's all added. Push it up and then switch over to our production site, git pull, run composer install no dev to get the new modules and their dependencies if there are any. And then we're going to import the configuration and rebuild the cache. Can you imagine trying to do this live? <laughs> All right, so with that imported and rebuilt, we can view the site. So everything theoretically should look exactly like it does on uh, local as it does on the production, minus the things that are overridden. Let's so look on the modules page. You can see when I go to it, here we go the admin toolbar and all of those fun things are enabled as well as redirect path auto and then yeah so that's all those are all checked you can see that the temp directory is no longer trying to go to a mamp directory it's going to just slash temp and then back on the home page you can see that the blocks are there on the left the view is created got a nice drop down menu thanks to admin toolbar and everything is exactly like it was on local as it is on production. And that just took two minutes if you can edit your life like I edited the videos. <laughs> oh, and now I'm showing that the, the Google Analytics account is showing up there on live, but on the, the development site, there's no Google Analytics because I overrode it. But we didn't talk about that. So, cool. Any other questions about uh, 
Anything, yes, sir. Have you evaluated uh, anything like the .dev or the .dev packages that allow you to kind of take those and put them outside of the settings files? I have not. I've not even heard of them. The dot .dev or .mv? It's dot .emv. .emv? I haven't heard of it. Gotcha. No, I haven't heard of it or used it. I'll just check it out. Is that something that, like, the version of other conversation could I don't know. Possibly. I'm not actually running that buff, so you can uh, run in and say, is this good? And they'll tell you. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Any other questions before we go? Run into a case where I need to what? Like you need to patch a contributor. Oh, patch, yes. If uh, That's all taken care of. If you look at the uh, composer project on GitHub, there's a section there that says how to patch them. You basically just link to the patch, and it takes care of installing that patch during the build. Yep, that's great. Uh, yes, I'm pretty sure it will. I hope not. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, was it? That's too bad. Cool. Thanks.